Hey there! This video is to show you how I began making a porcelain doll. <laughs> My name is Lily of Lily's Little's Miniature Dolls. I make porcelain dollhouse dolls in one inch scale. So for reference, one inch scale is the most popular in the miniatures hobby. It is one inch equals one foot. So my dolls are about five to six inches tall and they fit into most of the dollhouses and miniature scenes out there. So these are the things that I use to, um, to make a porcelain doll. So you'll need a plaster mold. I know they're hard to find. They're really hard to find. I make my own, not all of them, but I, you know, last three years I started sculpting my own and making my own and I love it because I have so much more freedom, but learning how to make a plaster mold was, whew, that took me forever. But I will say, if you really want to learn how to make a plaster mold, check with your local ceramics supply store. A lot of times they'll hold classes on making plaster molds. It's really important to get the plaster right because we're using liquid porcelain and the plaster sucks the moisture out of the liquid porcelain and then forms the doll. So you got the plaster mold, you got your liquid porcelain. I uh, use many different flesh tones. This one is California Sunrise. I buy it from uh, New York Dynamic Porcelain. It used to be Sealy's for those doll makers who know about Sealy's. It's the same formula. It's uh, they put it through a really fine processing. It is almost flawless. It's beautiful, beautiful porcelain. And I, I love the different colors that they have. I put it in old ketchup. Well, not old, but like a <laughs> ketchup or mustard squeeze bottle. Uh, so we got that there. Got a bowl here. Got a strainer, which is really an old cookie tray uh, thing to put cookies on, let them cool off. And that's what I drain the excess porcelain into. Okay, so this is what we do. You get a two-part mold like this. Um, let me show you what a two-part mold looks like. Hmm. I don't know if I want to open this one. Here, let me just show you. Uh, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay. Uh, here, here's a, a really nice commercial mold made by Cindy Gates. Uh, this is Yvette. You can tell it's beautiful. <laughs> My molds are a little rough. Uh, so two-part mold is this. It's a half and a half, two parts of a figure, a doll, arms, legs. This is a head body. Look at the registers or the keys. They hook into the hollows on the other side. They usually band it up like I do here to hold it together. And you've got a, a pour spout. So that's, you know, that's what they look like. So that's what this is. We're going to pour it right now. So I will say uh, weather has a lot to do with how fast this process or how slow it goes. If you're in a very arid, dry, dry and arid are the same, right? Um, area, it's going to go faster. If you're in a moisture, uh, more humid area, it will go slower. I live in the Pacific Northwest, Washington State. It's usually pretty humid here. There's a lot of rain, but it's June, almost July here, and um, it's starting to dry out, so it'll go a little faster than it does in the winter. And speed on how you pour it is important, too, because if you pour too fast, you get bubbles. If you pour too slow, you get lines. So find that happy medium. Which one was I going to do? I can't remember now. I think it's this one I'm going to do. All right, so watch me as I go. I'm going to put the tip down into the cavity. Start squeezing. Here, this will give you an idea of how fast I'm going. You get, it's not a very large uh, hole in the squeeze bottle, but you can see how fast I go. I go all the way to the top. Well, there we go. All right, so like I said, depends on where you're located, how long this is going to take to set up. But essentially, we want this model to be hollow. With It's basically a porcelain shell. The general rule is no more than a quarter thick and not quarter of an inch, but like the size of a U.S. quarter 
thickness. So I say no more than a sixteenth of an inch thick. Like I said, it depends on your weather. You will see a little lip forming or a shell forming. Now, I don't really move this a whole lot. You don't want to move it, but I want you to kind of see if the lip is forming, which it's not quite yet. It takes a little longer on my molds. I think my molds have uh, the plaster I've made with too much water. I mean, they still work. Uh, that's another story, but you know, the plaster has to be just right. Uh, the commercial mold, molds, like like this one I showed you, um, oh, this is such a beautiful mold. Super dry. It goes really fast as well. <sighs> so we just sit here and wait. Oh, oh, also a straw. I have a straw on hand, just in case there's some air bubbles. If it's a really, I don't know, well-made mold. It will, you won't need the straw. It'll just come out nice and easily. It also really depends on the consistency of your slip. Sometimes it's a little bit thicker slip and you will need the straw to blow into the cavity to get the flow of porcelain to come out of it. And you see now there is a lip forming. <laughs> this is good, this is good. All right, it's about my th the thickness that I want. Well, maybe a little bit more. I know, it's fun waiting. This is what I do. This is what I do for fun. A lot of people hate this process, the, the porcelain part, because it's real messy. I love it, though. I mean, I come into the house after I'm done. I've got, like, porcelain splatters all over my face, and my son likes to make fun of me. But, uh, yeah, you just make sure you do it in a place that it's okay to get a little m messy. Porcelain dust is dangerous though, folks, so always wear a mask if you're cleaning up after the porcelain work. When it's dry, it's very fine dust. Okay, okay, I think we're ready. So, I don't know if you can see me do this. Okay, it needs me to blow into it with the straw, so here we go. You heard that sound? It's like this hollowy sound. I got, I got it to drain. So let me set it right here and we let it sit. I let my pores sit for about five to six hours before I take them out. In another video, I'll show you how I clean my porcelain dolls. Uh, I was taught how to wet clean them. So I will clean them in the leather hard stage. So there's you know, they're, they're a solid, well, not a solid form, but they're a form you have to be really gentle with, but you can clean it, you can add details, you can do all that. Uh, a lot of doll makers will soft fire it before they clean it, so it's fired like at a 019 in your kiln. So it's a little bit uh, more vitrified and formed, and then they soak it in water and they'll clean it that way. I've not done that before because I have found my wet cleaning to be really, I mean, quite sufficient. And it, it's just something I'm used to doing. So anyway, that's what I do is I let it sit for about five to six hours. And then I take it out of the mold and I start to clean it. So that is the beginning of making a porcelain doll.